Sanam is a fabulous Bollywood Indian actress who works in lots of films, Hindi films, mom to a beautiful baby boy who is almost two years old, one and a half years old. You're super active in the fashion industry, also a very open supporter of the LGBTQ rights in India, as well as breast cancer awareness. You've won so many film awards with the National Film Award, special mention in Film Fair Award for Best Actress, uh, you've also featured in one of my favorite bands, Coldplay's music video for, <laughs> <laughs> for his single in 2016. And of course, you're married to the kindest and most sweet and generous husband also. And I love that you always have family first. You are always smiling and willing to pretty much do everything. So obviously you need no welcome, but uh, thank you so much for joining me today. I want anything you to tell you, me anything for you, Dr. Z, anything. Oh, thank you. I want to know, tell me a little bit about you that I haven't talked about. I'm obsessed with skincare and makeup and I'm a huge uh, Dr. Zamani uh, product consumer. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> it's something that I really, really love, like skincare and taking care of myself and um, and my skin and makeup and stuff like that. It's like, I love, I love that. <laughs> I'm a girly girl and I love pink. Everybody loves a little pink in their life. Yeah. <laughs> So as an actor, you are also a businesswoman, your wife, your mother to value. What inspires you every day? And, you know, what makes you go out there and give it your all? You know, as women, especially uh, uh, brown women, we've been we've been kind of taught or we have been conditioned to think that our role is of a, only a mother and a wife and a homemaker. Even though our parents, like our parents have always encouraged us to work, I think yours and mine, um, to be something of ourselves. But there was always that understanding that, you know, when you become a wife or you become a mom and that's what your life should be about. But um, my work gives me such a sense of self and um, and makes me feel like an individual, even though it's so fulfilling to be a mom and a wife and a homemaker. Work is something that gives me a very strong sense of strength and self. I love that. And, you know, you've always said that your mother has been a very huge source of inspiration yeah. and admiration for you. Is she the one that you feel has always been the big source of inspiration? 100%. Because since I can remember, she's she's basically, I, I don't think any man could do that, like juggle all <laughs> the hats. Um, and she's done that, you know, and she used to also manage my dad's money. I love that. I love whenever you tell me that. And I actually always love that you give her that sense of, you know, being able to do it all. Because sometimes I think men are very like, they have one path and they can only see that one path. But we women do, are multidimensional. She, she's always worked. She, ma she managed my work and my money and my, now I do it, but she still manages my dad's money completely. Like, everything and then she manages the household and she works and she takes care of us and theirs has always been a true partnership we never had the traditional patriarchal household it was a partnership it was it was parenting and them taking care of the home and the ideas like if if I'm like I'm helping my mom and my aunt my aunt is an amazing interior designer and uh, my mom's like doing up a foyer and she was like they make those decisions together and usually um at least in my case I'm like figuring out what looks nice and where what goes and I'm sure it's the same for you Dr. Z but my dad is because he's an artist I think he's equally involved in like kind of they make those decisions together so I've always seen them make every decision whether yeah. it concerned us whether it concerned the house whether it concerned staff whether it concerned money whether it concerned holidays investments it was always together it was never or it was always divided in a way where it felt like it was an equal partnership. And I think that was a very healthy way to grow up. Well, I think it's also really incredible because your your mother and your father are both hugely successful. And then their children have also, you know, had this insane work ethic and have made something of themselves independent of, of the family. And I, I often look at that and I think, what did they do? What was that recipe that made them so really fabulous and made all of you fabulous? You know, so 
uh, I think actually, you know, that's a credit to them. And I'm sure you're going to be the same to your <laughs> growing family as well. I mean, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, as they oh say. Oh, my God. No, I, I tell you the one thing that I've learned uh, from my parents is to be completely non-judgmental. Very important. Uh, very important. No, no judgment. Very um, open to us uh, just being ourselves and having an opinion and at the same time you know they didn't want us to be obnoxious in terms of like they were like you need to have an opinion you need to be yourself but al always have like good manners and stuff like that they, they were like whatever you feel like you want to do and which path you want to go towards is what um is being kind of inculcated in us um I, even I though my it. parents came from very um modest uh beginnings they they tried to, I mean, they became very, very successful and it took them a lot of years. And I think that kind, those kind of, um, uh, that, that upbringing of theirs and that, um, the moral compass that comes from that sort of uh, upbringing is very different from when you, when you have a lot and they inculcated that in okay. us. What's the one piece of advice you would give your younger self? I mean, you're so young, you're still super young, but what is the one, <laughs> one piece of advice you'd give yourself? To think before I act. That's great advice. Yeah, and just to sleep on it and not be so impulsive and um, to think before I spoke, to think before I acted, to be emotional, but not to lead with emotion, like kind of have, a bit of both and I I made that mistake quite a bit when I was younger you need to think and I I did I didn't have that um I didn't have that in my nature when I was younger I, and if that comes my mom said that comes with age and that and comes with right age and moms are always right <laughs> mom's are always right and um and then listen to your mom you know you don't end up listening to your parents as much this is so true yeah. You have so much to be proud of. What is, is there something that sticks out to you as like the thing that you're super proud of? Well, I think it's to have the right moral compass. I, I don't think I'm ashamed of any of my actions, you know, or the things that I've done. I've always stood up for what I think is right. Um, I've always had an opinion. And um, especially when you come, you have a public platform and you have a place that you can use your voice, you should always, um, always have be on the right side of history. And I feel like that when you're younger, um, you know, you're foolhardy, but when you're older, it takes way more courage to kind of speak up. And um, that is something that I feel like has been inculcated in me by my parents. And, that, that. Is, and, and that is something that I feel like I, I am proud of. And when I look back at life, I know that I, I'd never be ashamed of being quiet or not saying something. I love that. I absolutely love that. What do you think has changed the most about you since becoming a mother? For instance, for me, when I became a mother, I mean, I always loved kids, but as soon as I became a mother, I love everybody's kids, you know? So I, it's like I became mother earth as opposed to, you know, just, I always knew I'd have kids, but it was never like, oh, my end all be all. But now whenever I look at other people's kids, I'm like, oh my God, they're so cute. Or um, I feel like I have more compassion because I'm coming from a place of uh, motherhood. But is there some way that you think that you, ha you have changed? Or, I mean, I can tell you from seeing you, I, I, you've always been such a loving and caring person, but like really Vayu has like brought out just this immense internal happiness that I think just radiates and so you I, always, I've like, always yeah, wanted a Dr. Z since you've known me I've always wanted a baby right I know. like something that I I've always wanted and um if you asked me 10 years ago I wouldn't be saying that oh I this is this you know women a woman should have a baby like it's not yeah. I don't believe in that at all but I feel like it's given me a sense of um joy because I I, with age, I feel like cynicism sets in. And when you see, <laughs> when you see your child being like, wow, or like he says, wow, all the time, like to anything. So cute. He's like, wow. I love that. And I'm the curiosity, just, and I'm like, the curiosity. The curiosity and the wonder. And, you know, like he looks at birds and fish and he's like, shit. Oh. 
parties and you know he gets so excited and you know I, I in the middle of the night um in India you know we have street dogs right and the you're sleeping and you know no matter how compassionate you are when when dogs are barking in in the night you get you know you, you're you're disturbed in your sleep but Vayu wakes up and he smiles and he does bow bow and then he goes back to sleep oh that's so cute you know, and I think um, that sort of like optimism and and happiness with everything is looked at with rose tinted glasses. I love that, and I and I like kind of love that, and I feel like that's brought the same. I, like you said, it's compassion, it's EQ that I think you're inherently born with. You know, best of everything, like people and things and the world and. I, and I and it kind of I feel like I've read that has my, having a child has resurrected that in me. I love that. So, mm-hmm. what does beauty and being beautiful mean to you? Beauty is something that you you need to believe in your in your own beauty. I feel like a lot of people have kind of stopped believing in in what is unique about themselves. You know, um, there's be, become a there's become a kind of a pattern or or a way that people want to see themselves because of social media and i i kind of that is a bit scary but at the same time being an actor and in the profession that i am because i've been scrutinized and i've scrutinized myself so much i kind of understand it. i understand it right so I always felt it was actors and models etc who were in the public eye and who were constantly being photographed we always had that kind of, um, you know, we always like self-analyzed ourselves a lot because that was our job and we we were constantly looked at and we were looking at ourselves a lot. But now every person is doing that. And I don't know if that's healthy. So you need to really believe that you are beautiful in your uniqueness. I love that. The uniqueness is so beautiful. I, I, I get a little sad when everybody starts to look like everybody else, you know, like more of the same. I think you have to embrace your differences because that's what makes everyone beautiful. Yeah. More. What's the best kept beauty secret that you've ever received? Your D puff D line. Gold. Oh my God, the puff and define. I love it. Yeah, I love I that. Make it for the whole face. <laughs> I use it on my under eyes and I use it here as well. Oh, really? You use it in the nose to nose to mouth lines. I love that. Is that okay to do? Yeah, just- of course it's okay. I mean, it's been formulated to be a sensitive for your eyes. Of course you can do that. Yeah. And what's the one thing you do for yourself every day, you know, for self-care, self-love, overall well-being? I mean, you know, what is the what is the thing that you need at a moment to do every day? You know, I have a routine in the morning where I wake up, I do dry brushing, and then I shower, I moisturize, I have my skincare. Everything takes around 20 minutes. Um, I, I, when I started, it used to take much longer, but then when you do it every day, it takes around 20 minutes and that 20 minutes is like sacred to me. And it does not include me having my cup of coffee when nobody's allowed to talk to me till I don't have my coffee. And, um, you know, even though for the first year, while Vayu was like really small, um, that went completely out of the window. I, I like, I hadn't moisturized in like three months because I didn't have time to do that. But um, now that, you know, he's much older and he has like a proper Week. routine and he wakes up like at 6.30 as opposed to like multiple times in the night, I think it's it, it's easier to get back into a routine and create a, a, that 20 minutes where you can like take care of yourself and um, have my cup of coffee after, which was missing for a year. And I did I took that so much for granted, right? And then when you have it again, and you're like, oh my God, I thank God I have this back in my life. I, yeah. I can't understand. Yeah. And why should we be celebrating women? I mean, is there a message you would like to give or, you know, to any other woman starting out or, you know, I, I do think it's important to celebrate the achievements of other women because yeah. we don't do it enough. And, you know, women often go under the radar, you know, they don't want the attention, they they they're behind you're so ashamed ashamed of being successful women are ashamed. I don't know do you feel like that uh I Dr. Think that, I think I don't think know if it's a shame but I feel that a lot of women have that imposter syndrome complex I think a lot of women are like that I agree 
you know, I remember um, I was talking to uh, somebody um, where work was concerned and I decided that I wanted to concentrate on something else. And they were like, if you don't do this right now, you lose a seat on the table. And I was like, I don't think that would have been said to any man. No, probably not. Yeah. And um, and I looked at Anand and I, I, I remember I just walked out of the meeting. And um, and I understand why that person was saying something like that. But I think it came from a place of like frustration or them really wanting me to do something. But I don't think, I, I think we as women kind of sell ourselves short and don't realize how much we're needed actually for for everything, you know. Um, and there was a really nice uh, post of, um, I, I, don't, I don't remember, I think I saved it on social media where they were like, what would life be like if none of these women had invented all these inventions? So it was like Xerox, Wi-Fi, um, you know, it was like a multiple things. And I realized it was like, all practical things that we needed in life and life would have been so difficult because only we are thinking of these things, you know? Of course, we want to make our lives easier. Yeah, exactly. And I think it was it was like like brilliant, you know, um, that we, we sell ourselves short and the only way to kind of up, uplift ourselves and is basically to support each other in whatever endeavors that we have so that other women, if other women are successful, then there's more chance of you being successful. That's so true. I think sometimes when people just see it, they see you killing it in the world in so many different layers. Being that role model for other people is just so important. If she can speak yeah. up for, you know, these people, these rights, well, I, I can do that too, you know? So I, I do think once people are able to see something, they can emulate it. And I think that's why it's so important. It gives you courage, yeah. right? It gives you courage. I think it's always, it, there's always power in numbers. So true. Yeah. Thank you so much, Sonam. How Thank I you, you're, you're so sweet. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.